Stocks down for the day, both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. 20-year bonds up, gold up. If you haven't purchased our book, we're in the seventh printing, charting your way to wealth. We have a copy for you. I autograph them all and send you a little note with each one of them. Also, Patreon members, thank you so much for your support. We will be having all the special things we give to you, the special Bitcoin chart, the special quarterly chart training, the telephone call for our intermediate members, the special broadcast Q&A that we will do for all of our uh, entry-level members. We so appreciate you supporting us and our work here. We do spend a lot of time and energy, a lot of money to put this out at no charge to you every day, and we count on your goodness, your kindness, your support to keep bringing this to you. So buy the book, or even better, get in that intermediate level of support at Patreon, and you get the book for free. Okay, my friends, let's jump into these charts. What do we see going on? SPY, we see that it is down for the day, point to uh, 3%, almost a quarter of a percent. What's going on for the weekly candle? Well, it's a green spinning top. It means indecision tending up. We then look at our main indicator. That's the price percent oscillator. I'll put a special training at the end in the show notes for you regarding the price percent oscillator. If you're listening via audio, you can find it actually at chartingwealth.com in the training section, price percent oscillator, we see that it's gone flat, maybe heading up a little bit, derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Again, the weekly chart is still in a confirmed down move. We go from the weekly to the two day. What do we see there? Well, the first day of the latest two day candle is pushing up through the weekly trend line. You might say, well, wait a minute, Tom, what's going on? This is the first day of the latest two-day candle, and you said that the market was down. These are Heiken Hashi candlesticks. They show us average pace. They're showing the average pace of the price movement on at least the two-day chart is up. Derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum. Price percent oscillator heading up. Now we get into the four-hour chart, and of course you can see on the four-hour chart that the movement up in the morning and up in the afternoon on these charts. And again, we continue to see where the market bottomed out back on the 23rd in the short hour of the afternoon. That's where it sort of hit its bottom and started moving up on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and now Thursday above the weekly trend line. Derivative oscillator gaining upward momentum, price percent oscillator heading up. Now, those of you who were interested in figuring out, I had someone say they didn't quite understand where the out point was, understood where the jumping in point was on the S&P 500, somewhere around the opening uh, in the afternoon uh, on, let's see, on Tuesday, somewhere around 274, uh, even uh, that next day, yeah, around 274, so something like that. Where did it end up going down to and bottoming? Well, of course, it bottomed out on Friday and started moving up on Monday. And, of course, that solid up movement would have given you a jumping out point, particularly when things crossed back over going up. If you didn't pull yourself out at that solid green up candle uh, in the afternoon on Monday, somewhere around the 265 mark. So, again, um, do you think it'd be okay over the course of about a week and a half or so to go from 274 to somewhere around, uh, even if you waited for that second candle to start forming, 265. Yeah, that's probably okay. $9, uh, probably okay. You know, not, not bad. And again, those of you who are wondering, wait a minute, how do you make money when your stock or your ETF goes down? We're talking about the inverse of the S&P 500. I don't make this complicated by jumping into inverse funds every time. One of the potential inverse funds is SH. That is the pro share short of the S&P 500. Short means inverse, means it goes up when the market goes down, and particularly this index. So it is the 
opposite the inverse of the S&P 500. A little more sophisticated, but we want you to practice that and get comfortable with it. I will tell you, having traded for all the time that I have, my most successful trades over time have always been in, in a short position. I don't know, maybe that's just my knack. It's a little, but it just seems easier. While everybody else is running, uh, I'm jumping in and riding that up wave. So again, practice that. Remember, we're not a stock calling service, not giving you market advice. We're giving you some education here for you to practice. And we got great practice guides for you, great trainings, a great book. And of course, if you're a Patreon member, all sorts of wonderful benefits. Now, let's jump into the Qs. That's the NASDAQ 100. See a green spinning top there. Price movement is still below the weekly trend line. Price percent oscillator still actually heading down. Derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Still, we got another day to draw a can to finish the candle off. Two day chart. Now we have had a cross over. Well, haven't yet. It's crossing over appears to be, and that's a pretty decent crossover. If Friday's a big down day, it could pull that blue line back, but that two-day candle won't finish drawing until Friday afternoon at the close of the market. So far, pushing up through the weekly trend line on the queues. So keep your eye on that. We, uh, we are in a confirmed down move still at this point. That's subject to change. What's a four-hour chart doing? Again, still going up, 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 up. So even with things down, we see that the price, as far as our candlesticks go and our Heiken Ashi candlesticks, still moving up, derivative oscillator heading up, price percent oscillator heading up. So keep your eye on the price, pay attention. And of course, we had a great down trade until that rotation over, what, the jumping in point somewhere around 170. And again, as you all know, I hesitate to use a Heiken Ashi candlesticks because they're based totally different. So I'm just seat of the pants trying to pull this off and not be exact. 170, somewhere down to when things rotated back over 160, something like that. So $10 on 163, $168. That's really good uh, in that short amount of time. That's the beauty of trend following, not trying to forecast, not doing stupid stuff. And again, making sure that you only trade when you feel the best about it. Now you can practice trade, of course, all sorts of things. Don't hesitate to practice trade. But when you get good, you start making up your own mind to spend your own money a certain way. You know, caution, caution, caution. When you lose dollars, it's so hard to make them back up. That's why you want to be smart about what you do. Okay, so we, we've now covered stocks. We're going to go back to the weekly chart and head into 20-year bonds, up 0.38%. So far, we have some weak movement. We have a red open box candle with a wick on top, no wick on the bottom. So you can see where things have really backed off from that prior week. Derivative oscillator is positive. The price percent oscillator just not quite crossing. We'll see if the week ends on that. Again, right now, the weekly chart is still confirmed down. Two-day chart, we saw things peak back on the two-day candle ending on Monday the 26th. We had a down candle for Wednesday the 28th on the two-day chart. So far, we have a green spinning top. Red spinning top followed by green spinning top. Again, indecision. Derivative oscillators losing uh, upward momentum. That price percent oscillator is still heading up. And we look at the four hour chart. And of course, we can see up movement in the morning, followed by a doji, lots of indecision tending down in the afternoon. And we see that, of course, the four hour candle, the four hour chart, price percent oscillator still down, derivative oscillator losing some downward momentum, really into sort of a long sideways slide. So we'll wait for things to sort out and just see what happens and act accordingly. Again, remember when you got things, the large chart and the medium sized chart moving in opposite directions doesn't give you a whole lot to be able to do. We just wait and that's not a bad thing to do. It's better not to lose money than to do stupid stuff because you'll soon be out of money. Okay, what's going on on gold? Gold still in a confirmed up move. Derivative oscillator keeps losing upward momentum. Price percent oscillator is heading up still. And again, we are just seeing that weekly candle try to push through 
the weekly trend line. We have a red spinning top, not a solid, but an open box red. Again, indecision, lots of indecision, tending down. We go from the weekly to the two-day, and we see, of course, that the first day of this latest two-day candle is up. We're still... <laughs> We still have the blue below the red, but just barely derivative oscillator continuing to lose downward momentum. So again, waiting to see if there's going to be enough strength in gold to pull back through and set us up for potential trades. If the weekly, which is still heading up, and the two-day are moving in the same direction, then we can hope to find some opportunity to jump in. We see the four-hour chart just crossed over going up. Lots of up movement in the morning, bit of a pullback in the afternoon. Derivative oscillator uh, looks like it might be switching over to green pretty soon. Price percent oscillator already has crossed that red signal line going up. So we'll continue to watch, wait, and see when we get an opportunity to trade gold. God bless my friends. Oh, one last thing. Somebody asked me what I meant by total trading chart. Those of you who've been tuned in for quite a while know how beautiful the four-hour chart on gold used to be. When I say total trading chart, I mean it was the only chart we needed for gold. When we had the four-hour chart in the past, up until early this year, I mean for about two years, we could almost invariably count on the four-hour chart as being a total trading chart, meaning when it crossed over, when the price percent oscillator crossed over going up, you got in uh, after that candle finished drawing, and you rode it up. And when it crossed over going down, you got out, or it broke your trend line, you jumped out, and you did beautifully. And it worked month after month after month, up, down, up, down, up, down, and it was beautiful. Let's stop doing that. So again, if you, and, and, and I encourage you, please always check different time frames. And if you can find a stock or an ETF where the time frame looks beautiful and it just seems to work time and time again, practice trade that. Practice trade that until your fingers bleed. And again, learn from that. And when you start finding charts that work week in and week out, now remember, different seasons typically affect the charts and how they work. But when you find that kind of information, that's why we tell you, use your trade worksheets, use your daily market and weekly market worksheets, because they become your, your trader's almanac. And you can find times of the year when certain stocks work and certain trades work again and again and again and again. So practice. Perfect practice makes perfect. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. And how do you get to become a great trader and investor? practice. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.